Joining us now is Senator Cory Booker, Democrat of New Jersey. Senator Booker, thank you for joining us in what is an incredibly busy and sort of fraught news cycle. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Always good to be with you, Rachel. Um, I want to talk with you about the choice of your Senate colleague, J.D. Vance, to be Donald Trump's running mate. I, I want to ask you about something closer to home as well. Um, your nearest Senate colleague, geographically speaking, Robert Menendez, your fellow New Jersey senator today, um, was found guilty on 16 federal charges of corruption, including bribery. Um, today, you, you again called for him to resign. I just want to get your reaction to that to that verdict, and I'd, I'd like to hear from you what you expect to happen next here in the case of this senator. Hey, remember, Bob is a figure that most New Jerseyans know. He's been in the state working in public life for decades. And so for New Jersey, this is a painful day of real heartbreak and, uh, frankly, uh, uh, just deep disappointment. A jury that was sworn to objectivity, a jury of his peers, found by the highest criminal standard beyond a reasonable doubt that he was guilty on all 16 charges. And so, yes, he must stand up now and leave the Senate. He must do that. And if he refuses to do that, uh, many of us, uh, and I will lead that effort uh, to make sure that he's removed from the Senate. Meaning that you would lead an effort to expel him from the Senate if he refuses to resign? Absolutely. That is the right thing to do. It is the just thing to do. Let me ask you about sort of broadening the lens on this same issue. Um, it has been long expected that if a member of Congress or the member of the United States Senate is convicted or in some cases arguably indicted, it has been argued that an indictment should trigger this as well, uh, that member of Congress or that senator should resign or expect to be removed. Um, we are seeing that play out right now with your fellow New Jersey senator, with Robert Menendez, with not only you as his home state fellow senator, but also Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, also the Democratic governor of New Jersey, all insisting, Democrats loudly insisting that he must go and there's no question about it and it is no longer up to him. I cannot help but remark on the timing here that this is happening. This is happening on a day when the Republicans are in the middle of their nominating convention for somebody who has just been convicted on 34 felony counts. And they are not only not asking him to leave the ticket, they have promoted him to be the nominee of their party for the presidency for the third time running and are projecting what appears to be 100 percent unanimity in that party behind him. Even his vanquished primary rivals, who were harsh critics of him, his at times, particularly Nikki Haley, um, saying that they are they are all in for him with no mention of these felony charges at all. That that contrast just strikes me today. And even in this painful moment for New Jersey, as you said, I imagine that it strikes you as well. Yeah, it strikes me even uh, more deeply than that. Donald Trump, too, with a jury that was sworn to objectivity, that convicted him beyond a reasonable doubt on 34 charges, that should alone be enough for anyone to be disqualified from the highest office in the land. There are a lot of honorable Republicans who have shown careers and patriotism from the military from serving as senators and governors, to have a man that not only has 34 felony convictions, has pending federal charges, criminal charges against them, against him. His business practices, he's paid hundreds of millions of dollars in fines for corrupt business practices. His charity was disbanded for corrupt practices and forced to pay millions of dollars in restitution. And the civil crimes are, are just adding up, including one for sexual assault. We are a nation that should do better than this. And Republican values or American values, this belies not just common sense, but really the kind of moral leadership we need. And, and about his, the folks I'm watching tonight, from Nikki Haley to DeSantis, uh, uh, there are so many people that were on that stage uh, tonight that he has not only uh, uh, been in deep disagreement with on policy issues, he has sought to humiliate them, to degrade and demean them on the most personal ways. It wasn't about policy differences when he viciously went after people uh, in the most outrageous ways. And now they're running to that stage to endorse him. Uh, this is not what we need in America. We don't need someone that deals in demeaning and degrading people within their own party. 
And we definitely don't need a felon who's been convicted in federal court and someone who has paid out millions and millions of dollars in civil crimes, has shown in every area of his life, from his business life to his charitable efforts to even the criminal counts now against him, that he is somebody that is thoroughly corrupt in a way that has been proven in court after court after court. Senator Booker, one of your colleagues in the U.S. Senate, J.D. Vance, has been chosen to be Donald Trump's running mate. Mr. Vance has not been in the Senate for very long. He was only sworn in for the first time last year. He's been there uh, about a year and a half. He's only 39 years old. Um, I, I wanted to ask your reaction to his um, selection. Obviously, a couple of things that are getting a lot of attention just in terms of the, the substance of him and his policies and his articulated positions include what I think could be construed as the most radical, hardline, pro-Russia, anti-Ukraine, anti-NATO position of all members of the United States Senate, I think arguably. Also, a um, hardline, no exceptions, um, pro-national abortion ban position, which is something that is, um, uh, I, I feel like has a different cast as the first election, first national election that we'll be facing since the Dobbs decision, since the right to have an abortion was taken away by the U.S. Supreme Court. What, what's your reaction to his selection as Trump's running mate? I mean, Rachel, you're jumping over with the biggest, most obvious thing that I think people should be asking. They're trying to reelect Donald Trump. Well, where is Donald Trump's vice president? Where is Mike Pence? Mike Pence is not there. Uh, and, and neither is his former chief of staff, neither is his former secretary of defense. I could go through so many people that were part of a folks who worked most closely with the president, who not only are not at that convention, but do not think he should be president, have said so publicly. But the thing that most frightens me and should a lot of Americans is that Pence is not there because he saved our democracy, because he said that I'm going to move forward and certify an election that even Donald Trump's highest election officer said was a, a fair election. And so we now have a vacancy for Donald Trump to fill. And his first criteria is to make sure he picks somebody that should we be in that position again, a lawful election in the United States of America, as was proven by court challenge after court challenge after court challenge, that noble Republican state actors like we saw in Georgia have to fight against the president's unjust efforts to, to, to interfere within the election. He picked somebody who has said publicly that if I was in the same space as Pence, I would not do the right thing. I would not do the honorable thing. I would subvert our democratic elections. And so, look, I, I'm, he's my colleague. I've, I've, I've sat with him. I met with him. I sincerely know how difficult it is to put yourself on the national stage. I wish him and his family the best. But number one, I know and worry about the outcome of this election that that he and others have said clearly they will not honor the outcome of this election unless, of course, Donald Trump wins. And then, and then uh, as far as a lot of his extreme views, in many ways, I'm grateful because this lays plain for the American people that this yes. is an election which is a clear choice Absolutely. about ab abortion and access to abortion care. It's a clear choice about Social Security with uh, his, his voice on, on what he wants to do to that. So many things. This is an extreme uh, candidate that has clear views. It's just a clear choice. And I hope America can see that now. Senator Booker, it's Lawrence O'Donnell. Outside the Moynihan courthouse today, when the verdict was returned, the U.S. attorney said that this finally puts an end to the, what he called the years of corruption by Senator Menendez. And in the sweep of that statement, it certainly sounded like he was referring to and including the first federal criminal prosecution of Senator Menendez, which ended in a hung jury. Do you regret immediately championing uh, Bob Menendez upon getting that hung jury uh, eight, seven years ago? It was a hung jury. One juror uh, would not uh, render a not guilty verdict. Look, uh, Lawrence, this is reprehensible behavior that he's been convicted of. These 16 counts involve uh, not only theft of honest theft of services, but uh, doing things for foreign governments that should chill a, a lot of folks for what he's been convicted of. This is enough. Uh, he should step down. He needs to step down right now. And there are so many New Jerseyans who believed in him, who millions who have voted for him, that this is a, a, a dark and painful day. He was convicted by this jury 
That, that's what's, I think, hurting a lot of us right now. And the charges are, are extraordinarily painful. Senator, just to follow up on it, as you know, the Senate Ethics Committee did find in that first criminal case against him, after they read the full court transcript and examined all the exhibits, the Senate Ethics Committee found that Senator Menendez, seven years ago, violated Senate rules and related statutes, which means the committee found that he broke laws. Wasn't that the time to expel Senator Menendez? The Senate Ethics Committee did not recommend expulsion. They wrote uh, probably the most severe rebuke that I know of. Uh, and to me, that was a time uh, that all of us uh, should have thought twice. But then you know this. Uh, Senator Menendez was duly reelected by the people who had all of those facts. A uh, multimillionaire used most of his election putting that forward. What's happened now, though, is to me uh, the time where we all should be unified, Republicans and Democrats, uh, simply saying enough is enough. He needs to step down. Senator Cory Booker, thank you for joining us, sir. Appreciate it. We know uh, this is a sort of a, a, a news day of another magnitude uh, than a typical day, sir. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.